Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you how to do a quick analysis or all the basics of analysis for this organizational genetics uh, VOS DNA stuff. First, you want to open up MetaEdit and then log into the demo repository. Once that is completed, hopefully that won't take too long. Let's say you'd like to create a new diagram. What you do is you just right click over here in this area in the graph browser, graphs area, and create graph. I'm not going to show you how to develop a, a notation, a language, a meta model itself in MetaEdit. Uh, we've already done that. I'm going to show you how to just create a model. Choose a Voss diagram. Hit OK. Uh, name this uh, video demo. All right, so here's my video demo uh, diagram. It has a an activity. So I just clicked on this red box here and then clicked over here. Uh, the activity is, uh, yeah, sure, generating. I'm going to skip the date stuff. I am co-located with myself. It is continuous. Sure, the name of the activity is uh, demo video. Sync it when its position is one, uh, zero or one if I want. There we go. And nothing concurrent except itself. Hit OK. It has an actor. I clicked on this guy over here. Click the actor over there. I am James. My roles, if you want to click role, feel free. Um, project manager. I'm one individual. Um, let's see, we have some tools. This digital tool is uh, made uh, edit plus. And I have another tool. It's uh, Cam Studio. Very useful. Move these over. Do, do, do. Make them look pretty. Uh, we have a design object, which is persistent. Um, it is a, let's see, knowledge object. You know, I've never used that one. That's awesome. OK, it is a demo video pre-release uh, for now. Hit OK. To connect these, um, you can see this is activity to activity connection. This is actor to activity, so I'll click that. Click on actor, drag to the demo video. That is now connected. This one is activity to tool, which uh, includes an affordance meta and is used for representation. Yes. Um, oops, wrong one. Ah, escape. Um, Cam Studio is used for uh, storage, I suppose, um, or sort of an infrastructure. I can't remember. Anyway, figure out what it is better than I have. And then you have tool to design object. Cam Studio uh, demo video is an output of Cam Studio. And Meta Edit um, is just sort of an input, I suppose. Anyway, that's how you would do it. Then you can create another one if you wanted. Um, and then you connect the activities together. So another activity and you'd connect those activities together and so on and so on. Um, this is an activity to activity. Is it a second one? I hope so. Yes, the second one. Anyway, you do all that until you get a complete diagram. Um, let's pick out a complete diagram here. Something simple like Parker Hannafin. Here's a completed diagram. So you start analyzing this using all of our different tools. Go to um, this generate button here. Click on Essentials. Now, there are a whole bunch here, and to know for sure which one it is, uh, you can either watch this video or go to um, the Sequence Maker Master tool. This is in um, my Dropbox Voss Audio Video Files Sequence Analysis Tools folder. Anyway, open that up, and it'll have instructions on what to do in what order. So it says run Essentials Generator on uh, Diagram and Meta Edit. So that's what I'll do. Here it is, run Essentials, not Essentials only, just Essentials. Hit OK. Next, you'll want to hit Control H. That's a find and replace. You want to find tab tab, because uh, the code we have inserts double tabs sometimes if there are missing values. And then just replace that with a tab, a single tab. Make sure you start at the top and replace all. 
it'll go ahead and do that. If that takes too long because you have a huge process, you might want to do it in a different editor like Notepad++ or something. Copy all of this, Control A, Control C. If you're on a Mac, it's Command A, Command C. Go back over to the Sequence Maker, go to the Full Set tab, paste all this in A1, and then what does it tell us to do? It says run macro called remove duplicates DOs. All right, let's go do that. Um, developer macros. I just want to see the ones in this workbook. Remove duplicate DOs. How it says me first. So running that, you can see here at the bottom, it's updating, um, removing fluff right now. Apparently there's a lot of fluff. Now it's building columns and rows and sequences. And you have the option to build a Markov chain. I'm going to build it based on the activity type, but you could also choose location and or uh, configuration. I don't think the others work at this point. So activity type. And there it is. So what does all this mean? Um, we're on the trimmed Markov chain. Uh, these are the normalized Markov chains, and we have created a p-value and eventually a t-statistic for the sequential or Markovian variety um, uh, for this particular project. So um, the p-value says yes, uh, based on a chi-square difference test, um, the sequence of um, activity types is different from random and this t-statistic is based on these normalized matrices um, and a chi-square difference test between them and the larger the t-statistic the greater the sequential variety or Markovian variety. The next thing you'll want to do is go to the canvas tab it's on this tab that we have all of the sequences right here in column J. Also, a recent addition is I've added a digital intensity column. So for every sequence, I've calculated its, um, its proportion of digital tools to total tools. So for sequence one, for example, um, it's 80% digitally intense, i.e. 80% of the tools used in this sequence um, are digital as opposed to physical. What you need to do, though, is just uh, click on J2 and Control shift down and then Control c so that copies that whole column. And then you want to paste these into a notepad um, in the Clustal TXY folder. So let's go find Clustal TXY. There it is. I believe it's on Dropbox. Yes, it is in the Voss Audio main folder. Okay, um, I'm just going to right click, create a new text document, and this will be a uh, Voss demo vid. Open it up, paste all of those sequences in, get rid of that last blank space, and save it. Control S, Alt F4, or however you save and close. Now we want to open up Clustal. There it is. You want to set the word length to three because we're using three character representers. You want to go to File, Load Sequences. Pick the one we just made, Voss Demo Vid. And then save this immediately. Um, weird thing, you want to get rid of everything in this path except the name. That'll save it in the directory, the TX, uh, Clustal TXY directory. Hit OK. The reason is, it, for some weird reason, um, it doesn't like spaces in directory, um, in path names. So if you have spaces anywhere in that entire uh, full path, uh, it'll cause an error. Anyway, next thing you want to do is go to Alignment um, and Alignment Parameters, Pairwise alignment parameters. You want to load a matrix and the matrix we want to load is called the VOS just VOS weight matrix. Open and close. You can do that for multiple alignment as well. Same idea. Load matrix. <clears throat> VOS weight matrix. 
and close. Then make sure you save log file. <clears throat> That'll save the um, distance matrix or similarity matrix. Then go to produce guide tree only. Once again, remove the entire path except the name. Hit OK. It works its magic down here below. If this is a large set of sequences, it could take upwards of an hour. So that's beastie. <clears throat> now, the cool thing is you don't actually have to run the complete alignment um, if all you want to do is get that uh, dendrogram. That, uh, or is that right? Yeah, dendrogram or uh, distance matrix. So you'll see here that we just created this log file, lg1, and a dnd file. That's the, basically the tree diagram, the phylogenetic tree. Let me open this up, the tree diagram. I'm using mega5 to open this. Here it is. Open that up. And I'm going to fit this to the screen. You, know, you can play with this a little bit. Um, we want, let's say, radiate, radiate. That's a uh, un, an unrooted tree. Click on this little button here. Scroll in. There we go. That's a little better. Excellent. Oh, that again. Click in. And then wait for a change. Drag in. Wait. And then unclick and don't move your mouse. There we go. Okay. So there's, um, to copy, just hit control if you image, uh, copy to clipboard, or you can save it as whatever you want. Um, and there are many other things you can do in here, and just play around with it. I'm going to close that, and no, I'm not going to save. Okay, close. The next thing you need to do is uh, go look at the log file. Yep. These are the alignment scores between all the sequences. So I had, what, 40 sequences, I believe? Do, do, do. We can see if we scroll down here. Yep, I had 40 sequences. So this, these are all the pairwise comparisons. So you want to copy all of these sequence comparisons. Easiest way is actually just to uh, hold Shift and go down to the bottom here. And then click. And then copy. And we'll make a new Excel there. And it's going to paste all in the same column, which is no good. So you can uh, use the import wizard, use text import wizard. If that doesn't show up, um, you can also just highlight that column and go to data, um, text to columns. And what we want to do is use a fixed width delimiter, uh, fixed width option. Get rid of that. Let's see. We want to isolate the sequence numbers. Now make sure you leave enough space before these numbers for any uh, larger numbers. So let's say you had 400 or uh, 5,000. We need um, three or four places available. All right. I don't need any of that. Um, this right here, this ID, percent ID, that's percent identical or similarity. So this is the number you want to look for. Um, everything else we can pretty much just get rid of. Hit finish. That will isolate it. I'm going to get rid of this column and this column and this column and these columns. And all that I'm left with is the sequence one versus sequence two. That's the sequence it's being compared to and its similarity. Now what you can do if you'd like is um, make comparisons, average them out. Uh, we can see uh, the average here is 49% similar. Um, now we could also have, um, analyze multiple projects together and then found out um, the averages uh, within projects and across projects to determine what the similarity uh, scores were for those. For a step-by-step -step, um, outline of how to do this, you can view or pause this video, because I think I just put together one. Let me go to my sent messages. 
and don't read my email. Here we go. I just put together a step-by-step -step, um, process for how to use those alignment scores. Uh, here it is. So go ahead and pause the video if you want to learn more about how to do it. Pause. You may also be interested in looking at some descriptive statistics of the project. To do that, just go back to the sequence maker master. By the way, you might want to save this as something other than the uh, sequence maker master because that's my only copy. I should probably make a backup. Anyway, um, in the canvas tab, go to um, go to Control Home A1 and insert. Where let's see, insert pivot chart. It'll assume you want that much. I'm going to hit Shift and actually I'm going to hold it all. That, that looks good. Hit OK. Um, and you can just start dragging things over. So let's say, well actually this won't do us any good because we don't have um, consistent data. Let me show you. So for all generate activities we could look at um, how, what type of affordances there are, materiality there is, um, but since generate is not populated all the way down uh, across the rest of the material here, um, the pivot table won't work. So I'm going to do that real quick while this is on pause, and then we'll uh, explore some of this data. Okay, I decided to just um, I hope this is recording. Um, I decided to just use some data I already have um, that has this already uh, done. I've added, I filled these uh, columns in, activity type, configuration. Um, I've also filled in the method um, that is being used. There's waterfall versus agile. And here is the sheet that we can use to describe it. And you can just play around with it. So let me empty all these out. Okay, so I could say um, for activity types, choose, execute, and validate. It look, looks like all we have. Um, what are the affordances? I'm going to put that there and here um, that are used. And we can see in choose activities, uh, first of all, there are very few choose activities. Um, and the ones that we do have are mostly control. For execute, it's mostly transformation. Now, how does this differ across methodologies? So I'd stick methodology down here, and we can see that for, um, let's see, for Agile versus Waterfall on execute, um, Agile has many more transformation activities. Um, and looks like Waterfall has some storage activities, something that Agile doesn't have. Anyway, you can see how you can play with these. Well, that really wraps up the basic analysis. If I think of anything else, I'll uh, probably make another video. Okay.